it's Bella, and today I'd like to go over the Taurus total lunar eclipse energies that we will have on the 8th of November 2022 at 16 degrees of Taurus. Now, a total eclipse of the moon happens at full moon when the sun the earth and the moon are aligned to form a line. And in Greek, they call this alignment syzygy. Um, And that is the proper astronomical term for this alignment of the luminaries and the earth. Now, the moon, of course, does not have its own light, but it does shine because its surface is reflecting the sun's rays. Regions that will be able to see parts of this eclipse include north and eastern parts of Europe, Asia, Australia, North America, much of um, South America, the Atlantic, the Indian Ocean, the Pacific, the Arctic, as well as Antarctica. Now, this total eclipse will occur at approximately 8.02 of Greenwich Mean Time. Now, in general, this eclipse is taking place in the sign of Taurus. So when you look at your chart, you can look at the sign of Taurus and look at the area of life that it rules. And the topics that that house covers are the topics that are being quite strongly affected at this time, as well as when you look at the chart, um, which areas in your chart are also ruled by Mars and by Venus. So you really want to look at all of that as well as the Gemini house in your chart, because Mars is currently retrograde there and very, very powerful. So all of these energies are having quite an effect on us at this time. But overall, you are looking at a fruition point or an ending, something come coming to fulfillment in the area of Taurus in your life. Now, eclipses in general affect quite strongly, not only ourselves, but also the world, especially kings and rulers. With a solar eclipse, especially rulerships, governments, and so forth. And more people, the people, with a lunar eclipse. And in the case of this season, we have it added also in the fixed signs. And according to the ancients, the fixed signs were also connected to kings and rulers and governments and those in power. So we have a double whammy with this at this time. So we will be seeing with this eclipse pair because eclipses come in pairs and they work together. So We must remember that the Scorpio eclipse we had on the 25th of October is not separate from this eclipse in Taurus. They are intricately connected and speaking to each other because they're opposite each other on the axis, the financial and security axis, the power and control axis of Scorpio and Taurus. So we will see a lot of changes worldwide as far as governments, leaders, new leaders, leaders um, that will be changing. We will be seeing new laws as as far as um, financials, new currencies. We'll see extreme fluctuations in the stock market, in all currencies in general, we will see shocking events and and um, shocking changes. Um, we will also be seeing a lot more changes in regards to the food industry and agriculture and all of that. So um, let's just while I'm while I'm speaking about this, let's just go over 
um, this eclipse axis in general. So what we're looking at with an eclipse is the veil is very thin between the worlds with an eclipse. So we are much more intuitive. There's much more um, energy, as subtle energy. We're more aware of other people's energy around us. We're more in tune with people's feelings usually. And with this eclipse, we can expect fated turnarounds. We can have truths being revealed. We can have huge transformations in our lives that happen immediately and also are activated or unfolding over six month to 18 month periods of time. And in some cases, you can even look at if eclipses having year, like years of an effect in certain people's lives, depending on how and where and which planets they speak to in your, in your given radix chart. But eclipses are, are God's hand. It's God's hand moving things where they should be on his timeline. So we could have our plans, we could have it all figured out in a certain area, but we might be a bit um, off track or we might be completely off track. Or we could be in a relationship that's toxic and not good for us. Or we could be in a career that's not fulfilling or that's not aligned with our purpose. There are so many things that could be going on. But with eclipses, we are being redirected to the path that we are supposed to be on, to the people we are supposed to be or not supposed to be connected with. So people come into our lives, people are removed from our lives, so also things, places, occupations, habits, you name it, um, aspects of our lives are absolutely transformed. But because of our nature and because of the Taurian nature that can be very, very stubborn um, and Taurus is fixed ground, it's fixed earth, we can tend to not want to make changes here. We can tend to be stubborn and fight against what needs to um, be changed. We could be fearful of change because Taurus likes things to stay the same. Taurus likes to know what's going to happen um, and to do things step by step in order. Whereas with the Uranus energy here, Uranus is an earth shaker. It's earthquake energy. It shakes up that soil. It turns it over. It makes it fertile again and brings it back from stagnancy. So Uranus is saying, yes, you do need change here. For some of us, it might not be huge changes depending on where we are in our alignment. If you're quite aligned in your life, you might be experiencing little bumps, little, little, little shocks and surprises, um, little things you want to change. Um, you might want to spice things up a bit, you know, um, sit at a different table in that restaurant instead of the same table, you know, order something else choose a different lip color next time you you buy a lipstick you know you can you can change things and spice things up in little ways um, and that might be enough but for some of us the huge shifts are there because it's pivotal times in our lives where these things are activated and we have to just let go and let God and just let it happen so it's very important right now to not fight what's coming or going or who is coming or going, and to really pay attention to how we feel and how we make others feel at this time. The eclipse axis that we're on right now is really asking us to let go of toxicity, let go of poison, whether that's a relationship, whether that's a sugar addiction, an alcohol addiction, whether that's a person, an obsession, an attachment of some kind. We're dealing with 
attachment and non-attachment here. We're dealing with sharing and not sharing. Craving deep connection and intimacy, but not necessarily receiving it, um, is really asking of us to create our own security, to create our own fulfillment, to solidify our foundation beneath ourselves, and to get back to basics, to decentralize, to take our power back. This access is very much about mine and yours, obsession and power, manipulation, bullying, stubbornness, breaking, uh, breaking through, agriculture, um, medicine, land, equalities, fairness, wounds. Um, it's about secrets and sex and abuse of power, scandals, sex trafficking, property, <clears throat> new currencies, like I've said, financial systems, new financial systems. Um, we, we're going to see a lot of changes um, in regards to food and how food is grown. And we really want to start um, becoming more independent as much as we can on all of these levels with food, with finances, with, uh, with our occupations, what we do for a living. All of these things are in for review right now. And there's a huge spotlight on this right now in the Taurus area of your chart. And also in general, f collectively, what do you do for a living? Um, is it aligning with your purpose? Is it fulfilling? Um, we can't all do what we would like to do, but how are you balancing out your life so that there is enough of what does fulfill you compared to what does not? And where do you need to tweak things and change things around to bring more of that fulfillment into your life? And how, how can you look at your skills and talents? What can you do with what you already have? Um, how can you work with your hands? How can you, um, you know, also, it also brings our focus onto, um, less toxic products. Um, when we're buying fruit, food, um, looking at the labels, you know, buying whole foods instead of prepackaged foods, um, focusing on more natural cosmetics, getting back into our bodies. Taurus is very much about the body. Um, getting back to touch, getting back to um, actual tangible things that we can hold. Reading a book that's an actual book and not on a Kindle or on a screen. Um, those are also the things that will over time increase in value. Things that are nostalgic, things that are um, still real and touchable, um, tangible for us. Um, we are really in for a cleanup as far as what is necessary and what's unnecessary. Where can we simplify things? How can we make our lives more manageable? How can we let go? How can we recycle, reuse? Um, where can we detox more? Um, you know, how can we use our, our food more deliberately for our health and as medicine and, um, bringing all of this knowledge and information also into our education systems and in raising our children from the roots up. Um, what do you really need? Um, how, what are you doing with all that clutter? Um, and just really releasing unnecessary structures from our lives, making room for health, making room for growth, making room for nurturing and becoming more stable within who we are as individuals on the inside and also finding our fulfillment from within and not from without, not seeking validation from others in order for us to feel good about ourselves. Really defining your self-worth to who you are instead of what you're earning, what you're doing for an occupation, how much you're making, 
and all of those things. So again, similar topics as with the Scorpio eclipse, we're dealing with the spiritual versus the material um, and how we are investing our money, our time, um, how we've been programmed through our ancestral lineages from the past to think about relationships, to think about occupations, to think about food. Um, and since we have been revamping our value systems, we are changing from the inside. And therefore, many things are changing outwardly because of the changes that's going on on our insides. We're also now changing outwardly. Maybe it's your look, maybe it's your relationship, maybe you and a partner are not growing at the same rate or you're growing into different paths and it's simply just not a match anymore or certain friendships that are ending just because um, there's growth in different areas that are taking you to different places. And also with the Mars-Venus um, themes that we have here, we can be dealing a lot with war and peace situations in the world, news about it. We can deal with a lot more violence in the streets with Mars now retrograde in Gemini. We could hear about a lot more women's issues, women's rights, a lot of rebellious energy also with the people, especially with Uranus conjunct to the moon, as well as Venus combust. This eclipse activates again the North Node, Uranus, and Mars conjunction that we had earlier this year. Again, being activated by eclipses in Scorpio and Taurus in conjunction to these points. So we will be um, seeing a lot of activations to what I mentioned in that video. So please go check those out. I will put the links in the description box below. Now, the chosen nakshatra for this total lunar eclipse is Vashika, which is symbolized by a trident leading to the sole purpose. It's a forked branch or a crossroads, which really takes us to a decision that has to be made, a path that needs to be chosen. And again, we have Mars and Venus, just like the signs of the nodes the rulers of the signs of the nodes, the emphasis of me and them, me and you, my way, our way, together or apart. We have peace or war. We have doing something or not doing something. We have acting or waiting, hoping to receive, saying what you want or expecting others to smell what you want, acting in fairness or being selfish sharing or keeping things to ourselves, um, staying to people please or acting in authenticity even if it hurts others, um, staying or going, yesing or knowing. Um, we're weighing options, um, good or bad, heaven or hell, um, masculine, feminine, take or give, keep or share, storing or preparing and wasting and glamorizing, um, saving or spending, cutting cords or connecting, love and hate, communication or no communication, um, excess, um, not enough, balance. Um, so there's a lot of these types of polarities coming up for us at this time. And I feel there's a definite crisis of conscience with this eclipse season as well. Um, we're really presently discovering ourselves more deeply within through the sharing of energies with others and paying attention to how that makes us feel. How do we make others feel? Um, we can be more sensitive, like I've said. We can feel more challenged, um, according to our value system. Um, but our worlds can really feel at odds in these two areas of life right now, F seeming like they are seesawing um, and we need to bring them back into equilibrium. So of course, we have the moon in Taurus exalted here. 
we have the North Node in Taurus and we have Uranus in Taurus, where Uranus does not exactly love to be. We have the Sun and Mercury conjunct in a Kazemi during this eclipse. And Mercury is also um, the main ruler of this eclipse, believe it or not. And Venus is also um, combust um, with Mercury um, in Scorpio with the Sun. So um, Venus is, of course, a benefic planet, um, and the ruler the, um, of Taurus, where this eclipse is taking place, but it is in Scorpio, where it's not very happy, and it's also combust at this time, which tells us as well a story that relationships are in for a shift. And let's just go through the other quick placements here. We have... Um, the stellium in Scorpio and the stellium in Taurus also both forming a T-square with that Saturn in Aquarius that I was speaking about. And then we have Mercury squaring Saturn, Venus squaring Saturn, the Moon squaring Saturn. The Moon is conjunct Uranus, like I've mentioned. Um, we have the Sun opposite Uranus, Sun trine Neptune, Mercury opposite um, the Moon, Moon opposite Venus. We have Venus trine Neptune, Mars squaring Jupiter and Neptune, Mars trining Saturn, Jupiter sextiling Pluto. Um, so we just have so much energy going on at this time. But basically what I want to focus on is that we want to be careful financially right now. We really want to rein things in. We really want to make sure that we are looking at um, how, we're, how we're making money, how we're spending money, where we're investing our time, how we're investing our time, who's in our life, whatever is not aligning with your purpose and where you're going right now needs to go. We are purifying, we are moving towards growth and nutrient-rich soil for our lives going forward. And therefore we need to get rid of whatever is not working, whatever is toxic. So look at everything that you've been putting into your body, into your mind. With Mars retrograde in Gemini, we are rethinking a lot of things. And our minds can be very busy. We can deal with a lot of anxiety at this time, especially with the Uranian energy with Mars. I, I mean, with, um, with the moon. So we can experience a lot of erratic, fluctuating emotions. We can find relationships ending, beginning. Um, we can deal with a lot of shocking surprises. Um, like I said, also worldwide. Uh, and then also, of course, um, seismically and earth events with these types of energies. This eclipse can be great for deep research um, scientific research. Um, it can be very supportive of analyzing different options, different people, different sides of a coin. Um, so we have that ability to really go deep at this time and to really um, look at things in much more depth in order for us to move forward. And in, in most cases at this time, relationships are going to feature extremely strong. And we will continue in the relationship themes with also the nodes next year moving into Aries and Libra. And we will again be having eclipses in signs that are ruled by Mars and Venus. And therefore, we will be continuing for another um, 18 months after that. So for the next two years, we are dealing with relationships, period, and purging and working on them and establishing whether they are um, moving forward with us or not. And the area of Aquarius in your life um, where you have had a lot of blockages, a lot of frustration um, in connection to this 
area of Taurus, that area will have more flexibility and movement in the next year as we enter 2023 in March and April. Um, a lot of shifts are taking place. We have Mars then moving out of Gemini. We have um, Saturn moving into out of Aquarius and into Pisces. Um, we'll have Pluto moving into Aquarius. So we will have a lot of shifts taking place at that time. And a lot of what's happening right now that's starting and beginning and ending with these eclipses will have an effect again at that time. Um, so we will be revisiting the themes that we are dealing with now six months from now. Um, and we will also be um, having more room to move forward in this area where we've felt quite frustrated and stuck um, in Aquarius, um, where we've maybe been really um, boggled down with responsibilities or dealing with, with people or having being held back by certain responsibilities towards others or um, just, you know, tape, red tape, things that have been binding us to things or other people or connections of some kind that have been keeping us from moving forward. And so there will be more room for growth and movement in that area as we enter 2023 and we move into that March-April period of time. But overall, it's a good time to spend time in nature, to really get back into your body, especially with the Uranus energy, to really um, do some meditation, do some breath work, um, do some yoga, you know, get on the floor and really um, feel your body. Um, just get back in touch with um, what you're feeding yourself um, and so forth. And of course, we want to be very aware of um, of grounding ourselves also meant so that mentally we can be more clear with this Uranus energy. We can expect unexpected news, sudden shocks and revelations, truths being exposed um, that can that can definitely rock our boats, whether it's on a personal level or on a global level. Um, we have to remember also that not all of these activations are immediate, but some of them unfold over six months or longer even for that. So you can look at the developments and see how it's working for you. There's a lot we want to say during this time. There's a lot coming up in our minds, um, but I would wait a few days um, before acting on any of it um, because the eclipse energy is so potent and things can come out the wrong way. There can be a lot of misinterpretation, miscommunication. So we want to make sure that we really know what it is that we want to say, really just become um, sort of a detached observer of your own feelings and life and really all the changes that you have been through in the last, you know, two years or so. Um, look back and reflect um, before moving forward. Also, please remember to stay kind to everyone around you um, and to stay as truthful as to, you, to your truth as possible um, and to be brave, to stand in your truth, even if it's painful, in order to free yourself and others with the decisions that you have to make. In the next while. The decision that's being weighed, I feel, is very heavily, it, for everyone could be different, but there, it's, it's almost like a decision between good and evil or something that you, and when I say good and evil, I mean also, I mean it in the, in the actual real way of good and evil as we're facing in the world today, but also um, spiritually good and evil as far as 
um, the choices we make in our lives that echoes in eternity um, and preparation and purification for what is to come. But also, um, we are going through a period now where we can, because of all the changes and growth and changes in our values systems that's been happening, and because we've been losing a lot of people, um, a lot of us can feel very alone at this time. We can deal with loneliness. We can deal with um, feeling misunderstood, especially with these energies. Like I said, also miscommunication, people not really understanding you or not really hearing you. There can be decisions that need to be made um, that have us feeling guilty or feeling as if we could be doing something wrong, not because it's actually wrong, but because it might be something that you need to do for yourself um, to maybe right a wrong from the past or to be a bit more selfish at this time in order to either take better care of yourself or, um, you know, it can be something as simple as just taking an hour of the day for more you time um, so that you can actually um, become whole again because you cannot pour from an empty cup. So in order for you to self-care as well. So there can be some areas and if you're somebody that's that's very much, you know, serving your family, um, always giving, 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 um, you could actually feel guilty when you need to spend money on yourself or time on yourself or doing something for your own health or, um, you know, wanting to maybe drop a habit or drop a type of food or a, a manner of living or um, if you want to, you know, change the way you eat, but, you know, someone in your in your family might not like that because it disrupts their habits. Um, or maybe you're trying to declutter and get rid of um, paraphernalia that you've had for years that used to be grandma's or so-and-so's, but you feel like you want to detach and become lighter and rather um, have these memories in your memory instead of in physical things. And you want to simplify and and clean out your place and you're feeling guilty about wanting to get rid of some of these things. Um, or maybe you are trying to find a way to end a relationship because it's not um, fulfilling anymore. And maybe you've done the work and you've done um, everything that you can do. You've done the counseling, you've done the speaking, you've said what you've wanted to say, but nothing's changing. And you're now at that point where you know in order for you to move forward that that chapter needs to end and there's a feeling of guilt because maybe you've been raised a certain way. Maybe there's um, pre-programming um, that is now being challenged um, and because of you believing or living in something for a very long time, which is very Torian, it can be very hard to shake up that ground and change it over and to make you feel okay with changing it over. So there's a lot of conflicting heart and head energy here. There can be guilt, like I've said, there can be loneliness. You can feel alone because of others judging you maybe because of decisions that you have to make or that you're weighing. Um, so there is all of these things coming up at this time for us to deal with. But it's important, like I said, to not make any abrupt um, changes at this time. You, know, you already know where these changes need to be made. You've been struggling with these things for the, the past, um, I would say, 18 months. So, so you already know where this needs to happen. Um, we are reaching that point of, of where, where it will become a bit easier for us to make those changes in the upcoming year with um, Saturn also moving out of Aquarius and so many shifts taking place. 
So in order for us to free ourselves and become lighter to make those changes coming that are coming towards us and the new connections that are connected to this eclipse, new connections coming in, new doors opening for us, we have to clear out some of the old to make room. And since this is a Taurus eclipse, we can feel very uprooted, very uncomfortable um, with these changes or the things that's going on in our minds. And we can feel restless and sort of like we're in new territory. Um, it's, so it's important to, like I've mentioned, scale down. You know, how many credit cards do I need? Um, you know, do we even watch all these channels? Um, how can you simplify, cut back, make, you know, knit back the, to the basics and gain that feeling of control again um, to a degree <laughs> um, with, with simplifying and just getting back to basics, grounding, spending time in prayer. Um, Jupiter and Neptune is now in, uh, Jupiter is back in Pisces now until the end of the year. And this will be the last time in our lifetime that Jupiter and Neptune, both co-rulers of Pisces, will be in Pisces. So this is a divine, um, time for us to spend in prayer, to be close to, to God. And with the eclipse energies and those energies, the veil is extremely thin. So we can experience miraculous turnarounds and people can drop addictions, um, with a switch with this type of energy. If you make the decision and stick to it, um, you know, Taurus can be very stubborn, but when Taurus says, I'm doing this and this is a yes. Taurus goes for it. And um, once that decision's been made, it's onwards and upwards from there. So the determination is there. I'll tell you, these eclipses have definitely um, rocked my boat. And I have completely not even been able to do this recording. Um, I've had extreme struggles just to, just to get my words out. And, um, so I do apologize that I, I feel like this is probably quite all over the show, this recording. Um, but I needed to get it out there somehow <laughs> and here it is, but I would also like to read to you the inside degrees for 20 Scorpio, where Venus the ruler of Taurus is sitting. A serpent wrapped around an immense egg, bearing deeply an entirely different future for yourself and everybody, condemned to hold this off, preserve it, keep it warmed through, not break into it until the signal is given. This is a punishing ordeal for you know inside a different kind of reality and bear it directly within. But still, you must live as if without it. This eventuates in a barren world, an outwardly determined existence in which things must be endured just about forever. You are testing yourself, making sure that you are worthy to bear your great treasure across the abyss. Do you have the forces to be steady, implacable, sound and reliable and not turn negative and become the resentful martyr? Do you know how to do the right thing even when you do not quite feel it inside? Deep at the core of your being, incredible things are completely and utterly alive. And they will come through when you have fully overcome the old karmas and shown yourself to be strong, clear, and true. Even in a divided world that is past, fixated, past fixated, and at the end of its cycle, hanging on a bit too long. 
Remember to check out the Mars retrograde in Gemini video as well as the Uranus, Mars and North Node conjunction video with the links in the box below. Remember that what is for you will not pass you by. Remember that you are enough, that you have everything you need inside of you already. May the sun shine bright on you this day. May there be blessings coming your way. Until next time. Bye-bye.